Hey guys, and welcome back to the channel. My name is Grace, and this is The Rusty Thicket. So today I really wanted to walk you guys through my entire studio setup. It is the official studio tour because the first one I did, I kind of knew that was temporary. Um, and sure, things might change again here in the future, but for now, this is how things are going to be. Um, especially after upgrading some furniture and just uh, buying some new organizing items that I knew I was going to want. Um, but I just want to show you through all the little boxes, all the drawers, and let you know exactly how I store my items. Because even though this is a very small space, I only have half of a bedroom, I have a fully functioning studio. And even though I don't sell online right now and I don't have boxes and packaging, I am really confident with the way things are set up that I could find storage for those in the small space that I have, uh, especially since a lot of my items are also small. Uh, but I just wanted to share how I do stuff because I love watching organizing videos. I love watching people clean and put labels on things. Uh, I enjoy doing it myself and I think this is just a testament to that. So I would really appreciate if you guys watched and uh, let me know anything in the comment section below that you would like, especially about any of the items I have. I'm going to try and tag as much stuff as I can in the bottom. Um, and yeah, so uh, be prepared for lots of camera angles because it's such a small space. I have to kind of fish eye some stuff just to kind of give you all a whole idea of what it all looks like. Um, and yeah, I hope you guys enjoy. All right, guys, we're gonna start off with a little bit of a fish eye lens so that you can see what is going on in this whole room. So this is our second bedroom. Um, if you've watched the channel before, you know that I share this room with my husband. All of his stuff is over here. He's a big gamer and just, you know, he loves his Reddit and all that kind of stuff. So he has a whole office set up. And then this side of the room is mine. So we got this really cool divider from, um, it's not actually Ikea, but it's like an Ikea here. It's called Notori, I think. <laughs> Um, but it just kind of helps divide our space out so that it gives a feeling of having a multi-use room, even though it's obviously doing basically the same thing for both of us. It's just nice to have a cozy little corner and it was important to me for it to feel cozy. So I, I got this. I also love it because I do use it for just a little bit of storage, which I'll show you here in a second. Um, but yeah, so this is just kind of a general overview. I have some shelving here. I have my favorite piece of furniture, which is this uh, 30 drawer cabinet that I got from David's grandparents. We've talked about it before on the channel, but I'm finally gonna go through every drawer and show you what I have. And then this desk is an upgrade from my previous desk. If you remember, I had a secretary's desk that folded out. It wasn't great for holding things like computers or you know, anything that I could leave out regularly. So it was kind of frustrating to always have to not just pick up after myself, but being able to let projects just kind of hang out until I got back to them because I just didn't have the space for that. So when I upgraded to this desk, it had to be this shape and light enough to ship here because our post office does not allow certain, actually I think all of USPS doesn't allow a certain kind of weight anyway we have weight limits so i had to do this i wanted some storage but i didn't need a whole lot because i know that when we move back to the states i'm getting my other grandpa's desk and i just wanted something that would pack light if i decided to keep it and be great if i had another desk in a room somewhere that maybe i get a full size room one day but anyway so this is what the whole layout looks like it's really small, but it is packing quite a bit of stuff. So I can't wait to show you guys how everything is laid out. But we are actually going to start here in the closet because it's the least fun part in my opinion. All right, so uh, let me switch camera angles on us and then we will get to that. All right, so this closet is just your normal, typical bedroom closet. You can see the pole right up here where you would hang your clothing, but we decided to put shelving in it this is like the, your typical metal shelving with the little cardboard base. Uh, we got this at what is basically a Lowe's hardware here. It's called Makeman. 
The other side of this is uh, printers and our Plex server and some other more mechanical type things. It's not really interesting, so I'm not going to show it, but just know that you can put your printers in your closet and make it look nice. So this is the overview. I really love these closets because unlike most places that I've rented before, they are not over engineered, but these are. This pole is nice and sturdy. This is not like a wire mesh thing. It's really in the wall too. Like you can't see too far back in there, but they have over engineered it, which is great because it holds a ton of stuff, especially up top. And that's where we're going to start. So this box contains all of my little project type stuff. Um, I will kind of explain that a little bit later when I'm showing you uh, a project that is actually done, but we're going to get to on the channel eventually. So this is like all of my vlogoween, vlogmas type stuff. I collect things through the years so that I can kind of, you know, have a bunch to work with at the end. This is for overflow organizing. Uh, obviously this bin needs to go in there too, but this is for when I need to organize something further that I don't already have done. Or just, you know, I want to change things up. This shelf is mostly for when I am teaching my art classes. This is all the paper I use, uh, my washi tape, the boards that I tape, the artworks too. And then I take this bag with me on those so that I can carry everything really neatly. This is my larger camera bag. I usually take it when I have to have my tripod because it has a whole section there to be able to put your tripod in it. Uh, this holds some stuff I don't really use right now. I've got like my uh, digital scale and some other stuff in there because I don't typically use any of that. Uh, my GoPro boxes and some things. This is the gouache paint you've seen me use on the channel. I don't really have a space for it at my desk right now because it's just so large, so it hangs out in here. All right, so this shelf here holds quite a few different things. Uh, this is like a little Daiso bin. It reminds me of like my grandma when she had uh, yarn or something like that next to the couch. You know, it folds up and it's got these little pockets. Um, I have never actually been to Disney except when I was little and I've always wanted ears <laughs> so I bought like my favorite kind for whenever I do finally get to go to Disney. Does anybody else preemptively buy things like that? No, just me? Okay. So anyway, this is just a bunch of notebooks that I don't use regularly but I do want access to and you know I don't want them hidden someplace in a drawer. Uh, this has got some planning things that I usually write down, like just a thought book, basically. This is my home book where I record what color and, um, you know, if I paint anything, I want to know what color it is. If I have any kind of um, material that I use, I record that in something. Or if I buy something off of Amazon and I really like it, I write it back down so that I could buy it again. Um, some of my planner and journal type stuff is in here for when I switch things out. And then uh, some extra like foam core board and things like that. This is my arm for my tripod that goes overhead for when I do all of my overhead paintings. And I have like some plastic vine on it so that it looks kind of cute when it is out. Right, this is the uh, swing line cutter that I have. Absolutely love it. It's paid for itself a hundred times over. And I have, have had this since we lived in Tennessee. So bet before 2015. And I have yet to change the blade on it. So I recommend that. I'll put that in the description box below also. Uh, these two binders typically have um, either work I'm working on that is not completed but it's you know like an original painting or something and then also I have templates and other stuff like that in here. Uh, this we will do a full video on or well it'll be part of another video of some stuff I'm reviewing but this is a fan vest. I bought it for my vending here because it gets so hot and I have not used it yet, notice the tags, but it's all set up and ready to go for my event tomorrow. So I will do a review on that and let you guys see it and tell you what I think. All right, so this shelf is all of my like 
product type thing. So is this bottom one actually too. But this one here has upcoming stuff or things that I want to get into that I have not put on the channel yet. Uh, these are Row Life miniatures. I don't think we've talked too much about it, but I cannot wait to do miniatures on the channel. It's been something I've always wanted to do. I love like Lego sets and all this kind of stuff, but I just felt like this was really very goblin core. This one especially is witchy. I can't wait to show you guys. Anyway, that's much later. I have projects before we get into this that I want to tackle, so we'll come back to that. Uh, this is some of my product that I've already made that I'm waiting to use at a different event coming up mostly the fall. I have to kind of get ahead, make my ornaments now instead of, you know, December. So this is like up and coming stuff that is finished. This down here is mostly stuff that is, you know, it's pieces and parts getting ready to be made. These are all frames. Uh, this one is like frames that don't have art ready for them yet. And this one down here is stuff that I am currently designing and taking to shows and stuff like that. I pick out my frames and then I match my artwork to those frames essentially. All right, and then this bin here is just full of all of the things that I need to make my product. So once my watercolor painting is done for a bookmark, this is where the bookmark sleeves are, the tassels, um, any wood pieces or pieces I need to complete with resin, all of that kind of stuff in here. It's like the blanks is what I call it. And then I have an extra piece of foam core board because you just really never know. You never know when you need stuff like that. I sometimes make posters for my booths and things like that. So that is the closet. It's got lots more space if I need it. So I really, I really think that if I was shipping things from here, I could easily put boxes and paper and other things like that in the closet. Okay, so moving on from the closet, we'll just go right next door down to this rolling cart. I'm sure most artists or crafters or just anybody that's got a lot of small things really appreciates these carts. Um, we actually used to use these as bedside tables once before. So I really appreciate that they're doing the actual job they're intended for now, um, which is making it really easy to roll this to the other side of my table if I need to. Uh, but we'll go ahead and start with it first. So this top part, I have two of these uh, divider containers they will lift out of here, which is super, super convenient. I have two of them because they fit perfectly. I got those from Makeman as well. They also have these dividers, which is really cool. I like anything that can be moved around and repositioned. I think that helps tremendously with organization. But all of my resin is up here. I like to keep these here instead of in my glue drawer, which you'll see that in a minute because they really need to stand upright. I don't want to jostle these around too much because I don't want to create air bubbles. Same with these two glues, just because I use them on things where air bubbles really matter, I try not to have them lay flat or have to be flipped around a bunch. Uh, this is my kind of like resin work tools. All of my Posca paint pens, I like to keep them stored upside down. It's the best way to keep a paint pen uh, horizontal is also great, but upside down basically ensures that your tips don't dry out, although it can still happen. This is like my everyday pens when I'm using my journal or my planner or just a notebook. I like to have them here. If you see this pencil cup here, it's actually a mug and it's super cute. I'll show you here in a second. But I like to keep my big camera's remote there so that I don't have to get up and hit play or record every time. I'm sitting down. Um, all of my jelly roll pens, I use these regularly. Same with my microns and my paint brushes. Uh, this is a, <laughs> I use this to dust off my eraser shavings. And uh, I just recently bought this little guy who is super cute. And this is a tabletop vacuum cleaner. I thought it was kind of gimmicky at first, but you guys, this is an eraser shavings just dream come true. It picks everything up. It's great, especially when I'm doing like little tiny cuts of paper and stuff like that. 
I really recommend one. I will find something similar and list it below if I can't find the actual one because I bought that one here in Japan. All right, this is a wax medium that goes over top of my gouache paintings on canvas to protect them. And then this is the UV light that I use to uh, cure my resin when I'm doing those. Obviously my watercolor paintings and my palettes and then my collapsible water cup, which I love. Anything collapsible or small or travel sized, that's my jam, you guys. Um, I have a couple of clothespins here because I use those to help hold stuff together when the resin is drying or mostly when the glue is drying, but sometimes so things don't shift when the resin is curing also. All right, this little drawer here is uh, some upcoming project stuff. These are notebooks for my studies that I want to, um, I have like a very specific idea of how I want to study this next time around. Um, I know that sounds really weird, but I, I like having big, large, physical notebooks for things that I can go back in and highlight and do all that stuff for. So these are just waiting. Um, this is a project we're going to get into fairly soon, but it is a watercolor color theory workbook. Um, now I've had color theory in the past, but never specifically in watercolor. So I'm really interested and excited. I've already flipped through this book and it looks, it looks really fun. So we're going to do some of that on the channel. And then uh, down here is my pad folio. It is, uh, it's really nice. It was an upgrade that I got around Christmas time last year and it holds all of my important documents for taxes and things like that. And then I take it to my shows when I need proof of like small business uh, stuff, that kind of thing. And then down here, these are being worked on and the reason they are out is so that they are not forgotten because, you know, out of sight, out of mind sometimes. Um, they are a project that I am just kind of starting. Um, it's going to be some grid paintings, some habitat grid paintings. And I wanted to be sure I had some solid ideas before I really put them on the channel. And I think they're going to be a lot of fun. So stay tuned for all that. And that is my cart. Uh, sometimes I will roll it around when I need more access to stuff. And uh, for the most part, I can pretty much grab anything from my ch For the most part, I can grab pretty much anything I need from my chair, but it's just really nice to be able to move it out of the way, but not have it take up room in any of my other cabinets. And then that way, when I'm ready to move my camera and stuff around, I have this whole area if I need it because sometimes I just need that light in a very specific spot and this can be moved, which I, I really like. All right, so we'll move along to the desk now. Uh, as I was showing you guys before, um, actually look how cute this little cup is though. I got it at the gift shop here on base and it's just a bunch of local I guess maybe local just to Okinawa, but probably also mainland too, but it's just a really pretty basic color scheme mug of bugs. And I love it, so it totally belongs on the desk. I usually keep my large cameras uh, remote here so I can just kind of hit record when I need to. Um, this is one of my favorite pieces. I thrifted this ages ago, I can't even remember, um, but it's just the most adorable little light. Sometimes I just kind of sit in here and do my planner in the mornings or in the evenings when my husband doesn't need a whole bunch of overhead lights since he's playing a game or something. Uh, but I love that it sits on this end of the desk because otherwise I don't really have a ton of light like right, right here. And uh, this is where I do most of my artwork. Sometimes I try not to cut on this mat because I like it for the flat, movable surface. I do a lot of, you know, moving stuff around and I like to not have to mess up my, ne my nice desk. It also gives me a space that if I drop glue or anything like that, I'm not ruining my tabletop. I will link this in the description box below because I got it off of Amazon and it was a great deal. 
Um, I have a little phone holder. I like to do this because otherwise I cannot remember where I've put my phone. And I like to have it really touch access because sometimes I use it for like my TikToks or things like that. This is just a little coaster for my drink, my chai tea in the morning. Um, this is my computer setup. I'm probably, I probably could use two screens if I'm honest. There's a lot that I do that requires, you know, for editing and things like that. But honestly, this, this whole setup has changed my life. I used to have it literally just sitting on the desk or out at the couch on my coffee table. And the amount of strain that it was causing on my shoulder was awful. And I was having wrist pain from using the mouse track or the mouse pad a lot too. And it was just not, it was not great. So I pulled this out of storage. It used to sit in my closet and stored things that way, but I needed it elevated. And then when I elevated it, I realized that my screen, the way that I would have to pull it forward, I just, I needed it on an angle. So I bought this little thing and I'll link something below on it too, but I bought it here and it's literally just a laptop riser. It has, honestly, it's been a game changer. I absolutely love it. And then obviously I have, you know, the keyboard here for when it's being a real laptop and actually on my lap, but because I don't want to be reaching this far to use it all the time, I also have my keyboard. This is a glorious GMMK -G -M -M Pro. Um, it's super heavy, durable. I absolutely love it. Um, I can play with all of the colors. Right now it is Stardew Valley themed because I'm obsessed with Stardew Valley and we'll get into that in a minute because I have stuff to show you um, but I just wanted to move this really quick and share that my friend Kristen got me this while well, she had it made a few years ago and I really love doilies so it's super precious but right now I'm just using it so that I can very easily slide that out of the way when I need it to to have even more desk space. Uh, this is also a new upgrade. I was having a lot of what I would imagine is carpal tunnel pain um, to the point that I really couldn't even be on my phone for a few weeks. That's why I took so much time off among other reasons. Uh, but this was actually a happy accident. I went to go find something more ergonomical and just something a little bit more upgraded than my previous mouse, which I'll, we'll run by that here in a minute. But uh, this is a Logitech. I can't remember the model number off the top of my head, but I will link it below too. My favorite part about this um, that I bought on purpose was the slant. It just puts so much less strain. It looks weird here because I'm, you know, standing up, but it puts so much less strain, strain on your hand and obviously the wheel and the buttons and stuff are basically in the same place, but I have a bunch of extra things for editing. And then this was the happy surprise. I thought this was, you know, like a movable mouse, and then you also had this, but this is the only, like it stays still, you don't move it. It is just a track, that's how you move your mouse. And honestly, when I first brought it home and I realized that, I was really disappointed, but this is amazing. It's not super great for gaming, but it's amazing for everything else. So if you do a lot of editing, I really highly recommend it. Like I said, I'll link it below. And then the other reason I got this, um, this bottom part here is removable completely, so it will lower it down even more. And then um, I'm not going to do it because it looks clumsy on camera, but this will also rotate um, but about this much space down and be more flat so it's not completely elevated. Just, you know, you have options and that's the best part about something like this. Um, I don't have options in my other mouse and that was kind of driving me nuts if I'm honest. I recommend it for anybody editing especially. All right, and then um, up here you can see I have my Yeti mic. I typically only use this for voiceovers, but I would love to get into, you know, more streaming type stuff, um, even if it's just like playing games and things, not necessarily for the channel, just in general. 
Um, and then I have, you know, wrapped vines around it to make it look a little cuter. And then my headphones sit here, obviously. Super easy to just grab and then they're not laying on the desk creating any kind of clutter. This is actually a mushroom saver. I bought it in the produce section at the commissary, um, but I use it as like a little tabletop um, trash can because sometimes my big trash can just gets in the way. This is the cutest little stuffy plushy isopod. One of the cutest things about Japan is that they love their bugs. I, I'm obsessed with him. He's so cute. Um, I would love to have more this size because, you know, I don't really do large items. Um, as you can see, I'm about to be editing some videos. I've got DaVinci up, but we'll move up here. This, of course, is my little trinket shelf that we just made on the channel. I love how it turned out, and I've got plenty of space out front to add things if I need to. Um, this is the next week's video. It's a little watercolor book project. I cannot wait to show you guys, so make sure you stay tuned next week to see what's inside and how I made it because it was so easy and you don't need any tools, just a hot glue gun. So be sure to come back for that. But it just lives right here for now until I figure out what else I'm doing with it. Um, I like to have a little notepad on hand and this is where I keep most of my erasers because I use them every day, all the time. My little Stardew Valley stuff. This is from the collector's edition of the Switch box. I will get into more of that here in a little bit. My friend Lane 3D printed this guy for me, as well as that one in its little glass up there. Uh, this is the stuff I use nearly every day. Well, I wish I used my sketchbooks a little bit more, but nearly every day. Uh, so this is a regular sketchbook. This is a lined sketchbook. Uh, I mean, it's like, you know, throw it in a purse sized. Uh, this, well, I mean, <laughs> I guess they all are technically, right? Um, this is my actual watercolor one. This is my planner and this is a journal. Um, I also just kind of use this as like a regular old notebook sometimes depending, you know, how quickly I need a piece of paper. And then this is specifically for these things. When I'm doing my planner and stuff, I usually pull this out because it's got most of my actual planner stuff in here and it sits nicely on the desk, which is awesome. Um, I think we've seen it on the channel before, but if not, I'll run a little bit of a clip of what that looks like. All right, and then just below that is my iPad. I love that I can have it plugged up on the desk and still using it all at the same time. My last situation did not afford me to have very many cables coming to the desk itself, but I have so much space back here for that sort of thing now. And then um, obviously at some point I would like to tame all of this crazy mess. I have an idea for it and some uh, stuff I'd like to get on Amazon, but it's just not a priority right now. So we'll get around to that soon. All right, and then we'll go up to this next level up here. Uh, this is just a board full of like my vibes. I love these colors, the kind of the oranges and the greens. It's very rusty thicket. And I like having that little bit of blue in there for some brighter, you know, cooler tones every now and then. Um, I've got the Junimo up here and Sprocket over there in the corner. He he's my favorite Animal Crossing character. Uh, so most of these I've just printed for myself offline. Uh, I did buy a few of the prints as well. And then I just, I like having uh, like these little magnets are actually gashapons and I'm obsessed with them. I wish I had the whole line, but so far just those few. Uh, this is a really cool brass cricket. And then of course that other Junimo I was telling you about. And then over here I have a couple of little figurines I like to use uh, very seldomly in my art, but mostly just for decoration. Um, hands are very difficult and people are very difficult, which is why I have them in the first place, uh, but I don't use them very often. Uh, this is just like a little glass thing from Daiso full of these little cute bookmarks that I use 
for like up here. I just love their aesthetic. I think they're so cute. I will also link those below because I got the second set off of Amazon. The first set was actually from uh, Barnes & Noble way back in the day. So I don't even know if they still have stuff like that. Obviously my little mushroom light, I love it for the vibe. This is a Meraki Sphere. It's like a fidget toy. I really love it. It's very beautiful, so I like to have it on display. These are some of the most used books that I have. This one's actually brand new, and I will be introducing it to the channel in a few weeks, but we have a very, I hope, interesting project to do with it. Entangled Life is about mushrooms, fungi, and how they literally are entangled in basically everyone's life. Great read. I like to use the Smithsonian handbooks a lot in my stuff because they're great references. Same with this North American Wildlife. I actually bought this to take it apart for ephemera and it was just too beautiful and too well done to do that. So and now it sits on my shelf. This is basically like a journal, uh, like a how to do uh, nature journaling. It's really, really pretty. I use it a lot for referencing too. And then this is a little bit of my crazy showing, but uh, my favorite game in the whole world is Stardew Valley. I'm, I'm obsessed with it. There's no other way to put it. It's the only game I buy merch for. Animal Crossing could be a close second, but I actually don't have any merch that I've physically purchased for it. I do have a ton for Stardew. Uh, this is a book I've put together myself. Uh, this is every version, I'm pretty sure, I might be missing one, but almost every version of the guidebook that's come out. This is the most recent one with Ginger Island. Um, this is the coloring book. This is Before the Farmer. It's like a comic series um, about everything that happens before you get the farm. And then I also have like my deed to Stardew, my letter from grandpa, all that kind of stuff that came in my uh, collector's edition box, which sits up there. Okay, so I had some problems with the jet, so I think we are in the clear now. I was saying that this is the collector's edition box. I love it because one day I hope to meet Carrie Fry or at least have some kind of conversation with her because her watercolors are gorgeous. It's another reason I love Stardew so much is because the attention to the artistic detail is incredible. All right, so moving on. Uh, typically I have my Switch controller over here too, the Pro controller but it is being uh, charged in the living room right now, so I just kind of have this sign up here temporarily. Uh, this controller is the Steam controller. I would love to eventually get some really cool uh, skins for both of them, but I can't commit to anything, so nothing yet. Um, I also love having plants. These are both fake. I try not to buy any plants while I'm here because I know how quickly we're just gonna have to pack up and move. So uh, just to make it kind of cozy and you know, look like I'm sort of in a forest, or at least among the plants. Uh, this is a collection of my favorite cards from childhood. Uh, Eevee is my favorite Pokemon, Gabumon is my favorite Digimon. Some of you guys might not even remember Digimon. It wasn't nearly as popular, but I love his evolution. Very cool. Uh, Dark Magician from Yu-Gi-Oh! It was Yu-Gi-Oh!'s favorite card, so it had to be my favorite card. But also, I mean, he's pretty legit, seriously. And then I also absolutely loved Sailor Moon growing up. And this isn't like a card game card, it's just like a collector's card, but I had to have it. If you guys remember Toonami, that's how I watched so much of this stuff. Um, my little brother and I especially loved it. My sister, you know, we got into it all together, so fond memories. Uh, comment down below if you guys remember Toonami. I feel like it's a fever dream. Nobody knows what I'm talking about half the time. Um, this is my full keyboard. It is a hot swappable. I think it's got browns on it right now. It's brand new. I actually haven't even hooked it up yet because I typically just use this one, but I wanted a full keyboard for when I don't want to use the laptop keyboard for gaming. Um, this one is great for gaming, but sometimes I need the numpad and I didn't want to get a separate little numpad. So, uh, plus if I get another mechanical keyboard, I can swap out the keys and buy cute keycaps for it too, one day. 
All right, so moving on, I've got my Cricut up here. I love that it can sit up here and I don't have to bring it out or move it or roll it around. It's just in its place that it always is. It's got plenty of space back behind it to be able to do the nice long um, like projects and stuff like that. I obviously have all of its tools stored with it. I have a little mini iron here. Um, this usually comes in handy when I'm doing my little tiny projects because the actual iron that I have is a monster. And then this area here is just holding my book weight, which I usually use when I'm playing Stardew with my guidebooks. This is like a little silicone mat. Sometimes I pull it out for my hot glue gun and then of course some more plants. And this is a like a magnetic shelf. I also like to store my rulers here. These are the ones that I use for most of my projects because they have the cork backing and they're metal so that my X-Acto knives don't destroy them. And I have two different links, a 12 and an 18 inch. And those are actually both from college when my husband and I were doing uh, drawing fundamentals classes and stuff. Um, up here on the wall, this is like the newest addition with uh, some of my most recent big event money that I got in, I really wanted to bring in some more, not just light, but you know, I just needed some vibey stuff. This is by Govi. We love them. My husband loved mine so much that he got one also. They come in all kinds of shapes and sizes and things that you can do with them. This one is programmed into kind of my colors, you know, the orange into green, and I'm obsessed with it. It can tie it to your Google Home. I'll leave a link in the description box below for it also. I'm hoping we get more for the rest of the house one day. But we got these on sale, so, you know, nothing... We won't be, you know, dropping any money on those anytime soon again. But, yeah. So, uh, we're going to go through this drawer last because it's going to take a hot minute. So, we're going to pop over here to the window. I absolutely love this window. I love that we have privacy with these trees. We're the only building in our little, it's not a cul-de-sac, but we have like three buildings that sit next to each other, kind of in a semicircle, and it's the only building in the whole subdivision that has trees. I get to listen to the birds in the morning and the crows in the evening and sometimes the bats right before we go to bed. Love it also have a nice view of my front yard which is kind of nice to see every now and then especially on like rainy days I get to watch all of the puddles of water and obviously there's a ton of light sometimes I like to open this up and get the other side too like when my husband's not here but I like to hang little things on my room divider this is the bag that I pack when I like to go to my friend's places or if I'm going to go out to the park or something. I am calling it a bug out bag for a very good reason coming up. So stay tuned for a project involving this guy soonish. And then my cardigan, I used to hang it on the back of my chair, but I really love having this super lightweight blanket here instead to put on my lap. I don't get cold very often. But when I do, I really like to have both options over my arms and over my legs. And then I've just got like some moss and some things like that to kind of make it vibey. All right, and then over here we have Pete. He's doing great. I just cleaned out his dish again the other day, so he's fantastic. This is a little fake succulent, but obviously it's a snail, so I had to get it, right? Uh, this is an axolotl that my husband got me. It's actually one of those tea turtle plushies that go inside out. Maybe I can do it one-handed. But he's, you know, he's a Halloween axolotl that turns into an angry pumpkin and it's so cute. This is going to take a little bit more explaining. Um, it is just a Corel dish, but this specific pattern, which I'm sure plenty of you have seen before, was actually on Taylor's, Taylor Swift's most recent um, music video, Antihero, because um, it's got like that 70s vibe. I found this at a thrift shop here, which is kind of crazy. I didn't expect it. And now I use it for like when I've got, you know, beads or small pieces of paper or things. I just like to have it sit on my desk as a tray. And um, I just, I like the way that it looks and I'm a huge Swifty, so made sense. 
And then this I use to put on my backing cards for my pens along with other things I might need like a little cork board situation for. All right, down here I have uh, my ephemera journals. I've done a few on the channel before, but it's been a really long time and I like to keep mine mini. So I've been collecting these over time so that I've got like a nice sort of matching book situation. I like things to be neat and to go together and all that kind of stuff. So we're going to be getting more into this. All right, these are stickers. And these are also stickers and ephemera. Same with these. Um, we will be going through my sticker haul. Um, I've got a lot of new stuff and then things that I just kind of want to let you guys see before we get started into any more of the journaling. Um, if you remember, I thrifted this whole set up here in Okinawa and we repainted this and added these nice little drawer pulls. Um, I love how this turned out and if I have it my way, I will have more items like this when I have room again in the future. Um, so I used my typewriter to type out these little um, labels, this typewriter right here. Absolutely love this guide. This was also thrifted uh, back when I was in Tennessee. But these are the zines, both mine and ones that I have purchased over time. This is a small project store, which I have something in there that we are currently working on and will be in a, it'll be several weeks before we get to this one. But when I was working on my last project, that little book that I was showing you earlier, um, that's kind of where I was holding it while it was being worked on. Um, this is my Instax camera. I like to leave it in here so that the sun does not get to it accidentally because uh, light leech is you know, something that can happen with Polaroid type cameras. And then my GoPro and all of its, uh, like my second GoPro and a bunch of the accessories go in here. As well as this little container, I like to leave stuff that I mess with regularly. So the batteries, the remote for my uh, light range, and that kind of thing. And then down here, I have the flower press that I made um, several videos back and my goblin hoard sits here with my little collector tin on the top. I like to put this in my bug out bag when I'm ready to go out to the park or whatever just in case I find some cute stuff or some flowers to press to bring home. Uh, this I used to use more regularly. It is a painting magnifying glass. You can clip stuff to this and then have really tiny detail. It works great for like uh, miniatures like d and I used to paint those a while back, but it's been a really long time. So I'm wondering if maybe this might come in handy when I start to do miniatures. So it's just hanging out. I like the way it looks. It's very goblin core in my opinion. Uh, I mean, this whole shelf is basically just goblin core eye candy, I think. <laughs> Um, then this is my big thing of ephemera stuff. It's all magazine clippings and just larger things I can cut down over time. Texture papers, that sort of stuff. Um, over here we have more stickers in these top two uh, booklets and that, that's going to be part of the sticker tour. Uh, more ephemera. A lot of this stuff is like bits and pieces of your packaging and things that didn't really fit in here with like magazine type stuff and it's just kind of more random I guess and uh, I've got like color like paint chips and swatches and all kinds of stuff in here and then this is my flake stickers um, they are in like their own little container sorted out and that will also be part of the sticker tour and then this is something I have bought recently I absolutely fell in love with a few of the ones that I saw on TikTok and on Pinterest of people taking these and painting them, um, you know, in like the same kind of color tones. I just thought that was really cool and they are postcards. So there is the potential of being able to send some out to you all for gifts and prizes and things like that. And we'll be doing that soon in the future. All right, and then I'm on the floor, so I thought I would kind of do a, a pan up here. All right, so while we're down here, we will get started on my 
favorite piece of furniture basically in the whole house and I think that's really just because it holds so much stuff. I don't think I'd be able to do such a small space without such smart storage and uh, I would really recommend looking for one of these. I got really lucky. Like I said before, it's uh, been passed down in the family. My husband's grandfather had it in their garage and it was full of like home stuff, you know, light bulbs and things like that. And now I use it for all of my art supplies. Uh, the only art supplies that don't exist in here are the easy touch access stuff on this guy and then like my gouache paints and stuff that are in there. So everything else belongs in here. And let's get started. So this is my small tools drawer. Um, you can never, even if you're not doing things like bead and wire cutting a whole lot, I can't tell you how often I need a pair of needle nose pliers or, you know, even sometimes just putting them down on a piece of paper as a weight to like hold something for a minute helps. Um, I absolutely love pliers and things like that because they are so useful and it's nice to not have to run out to my storage building every time I need one. Uh, same with a little hammer, you never know, you might need to put something in the wall or, you know, I don't know. It's they, It comes in handy all the time. Um, this is my micrometer. I have used it in the channel before. I like to measure out like my uh, metal blanks for my bookmarks and things and that way my Cricut can get exact numbers on circles and things to print. But back here is something pretty new to me. I just bought I don't know, maybe a few weeks ago, um, a eyelet pliers kit thing. So you can put, um, you know, some nice rings in materials without having to worry about them unraveling or snagging or anything like that. Um, I may or may not use that on my bug out bag when we get to that project. All right, so stamps. Um, I've got quite a few stamps, but not nearly as many as I used to have. I've toned down a lot of my uh, stuff, but I've kept all my favorites, you know, butterflies, moths, moons. Um, I like to use these uh, on my ephemera journals a lot. This back here is my wood burner. And I just want to like, look at this. Look how absolutely perfect. These all fit in here. This was not, I did not measure stuff like this. These drawers are just magic. Everything seems to fit in them for the most part. I have very few things that I cannot fit in these drawers and they are extremely long. And they are, it's amazing. Like, uh, let me show you this one. I didn't measure to see if this book for coloring pencils was going to fit in here. It just miraculously did. I don't know. It's it's magic. It's like a Mary Poppins cabinet. Everybody needs one. All right, anyway, so over here is my acrylic paints. I have toned these down over the year also, but I almost always end up needing another color or something, so it just kind of gradually grows back over time. Um, this is my felt. I don't have a lot in here right now because I have recently been through most of it for uh, different projects for my uh, small business, but I like to keep all my scraps just in case I need it for stuffing or filling or anything like that. Uh, bags. Um, some bags for my business, some bags just for organizing. I like to keep stuff like this on hand because you never know, especially for stuff like ephemera. I like to, you know, further niche down my types so it's easy to find stuff. Um, I love coloring books. I can't wait to maybe one day have like a collection of my own that I have designed. But I love mandalas and anything that seems really intricate or animals or bugs, that kind of thing. Um, I do those for me. This is the shrink plastic drawer. All of my templates are down here. Um, anything that I use specifically with my with my uh, shrink plastic, so like the pin backings, any of the uh, resin tools, sandpaper, that sort of thing. 
Uh, this is all just like extra art paper. Some of it I use uh, for the ephemera stuff and then a lot of it is pieces of watercolor paper that have been cut down. Like I know I can use something like this in a smaller frame so I do not throw it out. I try to keep everything that I can. These are black post-it notes and they're really hard to find so I bought them in bulk when I did see them one time and I just have not made it through even a little bit of them. Um, this needle craft drawer, I like to keep thread and stuff like that on hand just because of the house. You know, I like to make sure we can put buttons back on things, but I also tend to uh, use this with like my felt and things like that. I also used to try needle felting and I'm not sure it's my jam or not, so I've held on to a few things just in case. Uh, this is the vinyl for my Cricut. I don't do a ton of Cricut stuff, so a lot of this is very basic colors and, or maybe something I've picked up thrifting because I think I might use it, uh, that kind of stuff. I like to not grow out of this because I can see vinyl getting way out of hand. I don't know how people have so much of it. This is all brushes. Um, most of what I keep in here are the really big or really long brushes that I don't typically use all that much. Um, I also have like some travel type stuff for when I'm out doing my things in the park or something. Uh, this is the study drawer. I like to have uh, note cards. That's my favorite way to study when it's a lot of information because I can just flip through them. Um, and then in a few weeks, I am going to start some classes. I don't know exactly when yet, so I can't say exactly, but we'll go through some of my favorite study stuff. It's been a really long time since I've done like actual studying, so even some of these items are a little bit new to me. This is for my planner. I keep most of my washi tape up here because that's where I use most of it is in my planner. And then I have, you know, like some normal businessy type stuff, some white out, that kind of thing. Most of my other planner stuff is stored in this uh, bag like I showed you earlier. Uh, this is my watercolor drawer. I have the color pencils. I have a smaller set of gouache that I got as a gift after I bought my big set of gouache. So I'm hoping that at some point I can get through the big stuff so that I'll have that. Uh, more colored pencils. This beautiful set that uh, a fellow subscriber gave me of some paper watercolors. And I promise, Kim, I promise I'm getting to these. I did a whole video and I just hated the way it was filmed. I absolutely love the colors and the palette is precious. I promise we're going to get to a video of that very soon. I'm actually going to leave that out so it doesn't get crumpled up anymore. Oh. All right, this is my marketing drawer. I like to keep it full of business cards and things of places or companies that I might want to work with one day. I really love the enamel pens from Wizard Pens. I like that I can get a sample kit. I try to get sample kits from any place that I can because I like to have my eyes on the product before I spend my time or money making them. This is all string and cord. I used to use these for my bookmark tassels, but I've since upgraded to actual tassels. So I use these for like gift wrapping or just other projects. Same with the wire. I don't use a ton of it, but it's so handy to have every now and then. This is rulers and hole punches. Um, I am a huge three ring binder person. I have to have a three ring hole punch. This one actually is great because it will do the A5 sizes as well. And then I have a six ring punch for when I do planners that are like that. This is a metal punch for when I make my ornaments, um, a stapler, some other sizes, and then like protractors and things like that are in that bag back there. Pencils, we kind of already looked at this drawer, but this is color pencils, just like a Crayola set. Nothing super fancy, but it is like the hundred whatever number pack. And I honestly love them. One day I'll have some Prismacolors. I've used them before. I've just never owned them. 
Um, and then this bag is full of like extra lead, uh, regular pencils, and a few like sketching type pencils. This one up here is um, markers, mostly Sharpies because that's what I used to use on my shrink plastic, but I have recently grown into Posca paint pens and I love them. And then another thing we're gonna be doing on the channel, can you see what that says? I have never used Copics, Copics. I don't even know how to say it, but we are totally 100% gonna be doing this soon. I cannot wait. I have always wanted to try alcohol markers. I think they're gonna be a blast, so stay tuned for that. This is the glue drawer. I use this glue gun religiously. It is from a birthday that I got ages ago. I think I've talked about it before. Um, and then this is just all the other glue stuff that I have. This says Apple on it because it holds a lot of like my extra Apple products, but really it's just kind of a tech conglomerate box. I am a millennial and I do keep a lot of my boxes, but for good reason. Um, anytime we upgrade a phone, we keep our old phone for a little while just in case. And I like to keep the box to store it in in the meantime. Uh, my old Kindle uh, cover and my old iPad cover just in case I want to use those again. This is my camera drawer and it's not for like my nice big camera. This is mostly for stuff like relating to my phone. Um, if I want to put it on a tripod or anything like that. Same with all the stuff back here. It's like uh, microphones, uh, like little cheap microphones and things like that from when we first got started. This is the tape drawer. It looks like this because I use all of this all of the time. Uh, this is for my labeler that I'll show you here in a second, but it's, you know, like actually tape. I use washi tape on all of my watercolor paintings that are big. I like to tape them down for that reason. You know, scotch tape, double-sided tape, all that kind of stuff. This is the pens drawer. I have gel pens and then uh, all of my colored microns that I really don't use nearly enough. I should find some projects for those. If you have any ideas for projects for colored microns, let me know in the comment section below. This is all just like normal ink pens and these are a few of kind of random outlier pens that I have tried over the years. All right, this is the labeler drawer. This is my favorite labeler, which is the Dymo. I have, I have used it in every room of the house. I love how easy the cartridges are to use. I love that it's basically a QWERTY keyboard and you don't have to worry too much about, you know, spelling and typing everything out perfect without having to go back a bunch because this actually lets you flip through the word. I love that. Uh, label cards for like, baskets and things and then this is the punch style labeler that I like to use for my ephemera journaling and it barely almost really doesn't fit in here but yet it does because magic um, this drawer is all cutting supplies so uh, any this is actually the only other board that I have that cuts besides my swing line, but everything in here is designated. Uh, this is material, paper. This one can be like string, thread, that kind of stuff. Um, everybody needs a pair of shears. This, this thing will cut through plastic, all kinds of stuff. It's awesome. Some real, real long ones, some short ones, all of my X-Acto blades. This whole thing back here, the red, the red thing is a full line of different blade shapes. This is a round cutter for like material. You can never have too many choices when it comes to cutting things because straight cuts and nice clean lines are important. All right, this is my computer drawer. It's got all my extra keycaps and my uh, cap pullers and my extra USB hubs, my old mouse that I like to sometimes get back out for gaming just because it slides around like normal. 
All of my manuals and things like that are in here. My old Wacom tablet, which I should pull out again sometime. All right, this is all office supplies. Um, I've got everything from rubber bands to clips. You can see it. I, I keep all kinds of stuff. I like to be organized. I know where everything is. This is my sketchbook overflow. I bought these in like a huge multi-pack on sale at, I don't know where, maybe Walmart one time or something like that. I like them small, like I've said. I did the same thing with these um, really, really nice sketchbooks for your uh, watercolor, the Arteza. I absolutely love these. I probably won't ever use anything any bigger than this. And this is what I usually take with me when I'm going on little planner or art in the park dates. And I like that it can't be pushed over unless you take it off the sketchbook. Very cool. All right, and the last drawer is some stickers. And I will show you that <laughs> but ultimately we are going to get to this in a few weeks like i was saying with ephemera i have so much that i have just been slowly picking up at daiso and stuff over like the last year so that i really have a nice amount of stuff to be able to flip through for all of my ephemera journal things um so yeah guys that is really it i'm i'm hoping this video doesn't end up being too long but uh yeah there we go. Okay, there you guys have it. That's my whole studio. A little bitty thing, but lots of stuff in it. Um, I cannot wait to do some of the projects I have kind of given you a very small glimpse into. I have lots of stuff cooking in the background. Um, I've just kind of gotten like a new a new energy for all of it and I'm really excited to share some stuff so uh, I hope you guys enjoyed please let me know in the comment section below if there are any questions you have about any of my items or if you are looking to maybe do a small studio like this if you like my setup just anything that you'd like to let me know that would be awesome please also don't forget to like and subscribe that helps my channel so much and I really appreciate you guys being here uh, don't forget to come back next week for our little mini book tutorial. I'm really excited to share this. It's just a little fun project that I had a good time doing, so I can't wait for you guys to see it. But I will see you next week. Bye, guys.